In this video, we'll do a quick introduction to the JavaScript files inside the starter code and see some quick changes we can make to run them in the JavaScript environment. We already talked about the HTML file in the starter code as being loaded into the Chrome browser. And at that point, we can see the contents of the page. We also said that once the page is loaded, the JavaScript environment is ready for us to use. Now we can talk about the JavaScript file uh, that's in the starter code. And when the JavaScript environment is ready to be used, the browser is also going to load this JavaScript file. And at that point, the JavaScript inside that file is executed. First, let's take a look at the default behavior of the starter code JavaScript. So when I click on the submit button, then I see the words hello world inside the gray box. I'm going to open the starter code folder inside of VS Code. Once VS Code is open on a Mac, I can just drag this blue folder here anywhere into the VS Code window. I'm going to open up the index.html file. And on line 48 is the line that describes the connection between this HTML file and the JavaScript file that the browser is going to run. So here I can see that it mentions the script.js file. Let's take a look inside the script.js file. In this video, we're not going to go over all of the syntax in this file. We're going to be mostly concentrated around line two. You might notice that on line two, there are the words, hello world. Those are the same as the words that appeared inside the gray box. Let's make some changes to these words and see what happens in the browser. So here I'm going to make a small change. And I'm going to save the file, and then we'll see those changes in the browser. I'm going to refresh the page, and when I click the Submit button, now I see the changes in the gray box that I made in the script.js file. The terminology for the kind of value we were dealing with inside the script.js is called a string value. A string value is just a group of characters surrounded by quote marks. A uh, group of characters can mean letters, it can also mean numbers, or characters like spaces, or question marks, or emojis, or exclamation points. The other values we were dealing with, numbers, have some special properties where we can do math operations, like multiplication, division, or addition. String values are different in that we can't do any of these math operations, except for one. Uh, we can add them together with the plus sign. I'm going to put two strings together by creating a new variable with a string in it and adding it to my old variable with the plus sign. So first I'm going to create a new variable. And I'm going to use this variable on the next line to add to my old variable with the plus sign. Now let's save this and see what it looks like in the browser. I'm going to refresh the browser and hit the submit button again. So now I can see that the other string inside the variable has been added to my other string. I'll also show that we can see the result of a math operation inside the gray box. So first let's get rid of our old code and I can change the value inside of my output value variable to the result of a math operation. Let's save this and see what it looks like in the browser. So now in the gray box, we should see the value 99 times 99. I'm going to refresh the browser and hit the submit button. Let's add some more features to our script.js program. I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the syntax that's going on inside this file, specifically on line one. This word input is actually a function parameter, which we're going to describe in detail in a future video. But for right now, we can describe it simply as a string value that's equal to whatever the user typed in the input box in the browser before they hit the submit button. And so the simplest change that I can make to this file right now is to take this input value and assign it to my output value variable. And that means that whatever the user had typed in is going to appear in the gray box. So let's make that change right now. 
I'm going to replace the math calculation with the input value. And now let's save the file and see what happens in the browser. I'm going to refresh the browser and I'm going to type something inside the box. And now when I hit submit, I can see that value inside the gray box. At this point, we have all the pieces in place to be able to describe our first complete program and implement it in JavaScript. What we're going to do is have the user enter their name and in the gray box is going to appear a greeting with their name inside of it. So with that simple description, I'm going to implement this in the starter code JavaScript. What we said we wanted is for the user to be able to type in their name and for a greeting to come out inside the gray box. So let's be more specific about what we want. I want to be able to type in my own name. And when I hit submit, a full message to me appears in the gray box. I want that message to say, Hello, Akira. It's a great day. So now that we've specified exactly the behavior that we want, we can code this in JavaScript. We know that the input value is going to be the name of the user that's typed in in the input box. So now all we need to do is construct the total message. I'm going to paste in our reference example message here so that we can refer to it. So what I want is something like, hello input. It's a great day. And like I said, what we want is a total string value. And so I need to surround uh, these strings of characters with quote marks. And I need a plus sign in order to put all of these strings together. So now what we should have is a complete string inside of my output value variable that has the user's name in it. Let's get rid of our reference message and save the file and see what happens. I'm going to refresh the browser and put in a name. We just completed our first self-contained program. And this program has all of these software application properties. It takes user input, it's interactive, it represents and processes data. In the coming videos, we'll add on the next property, encoding behaviors and rules through the use of control structures, specifically functions, conditionals, and loops.